Hello, I'm Jane Mangold from the Agricultural Research Service and the Eastern Oregon Agricultural Research Center here to present today's Ag Minute. You've probably heard the old saying, variety is the spice of life, but did you know that this proverb has implications for range and wildland ecosystems? Variety, also known as diversity or sometimes biodiversity, is a term intended to encompass all of nature's variety. Biodiversity refers to the number of species, both plant and animal, that can be found in an area. A site that has a greater number of species living on it is said to have greater biodiversity. For example, a crested wheatgrass field has very low biodiversity compared to native rangeland. Biodiversity contributes greatly to the way an ecosystem functions and to life as we know it. This week, I'll be talking more about biodiversity including why it is important, how it benefits an ecosystem, how it is threatened around the world, and simple ways we can conserve or improve biodiversity. Why is biodiversity so important? Our current knowledge about ecosystems and species interactions is really quite poor. If we protect the diversity of life on Earth, our own future as a species is more likely to be protected. For example, Many of our medicines originally came from wild plant and animal species. Considering there are an estimated 5 to 10 million species on Earth that have yet to be discovered, there is probably a good chance that some of those species can provide useful and even life-saving products. Furthermore, because we don't fully understand interactions between species and between species and ecosystem processes, like nutrient cycling and energy flow, we can't be sure how the loss of any one species will end up affecting other species and ecosystems. A great example is the prairie dog found throughout the Great Plains. Efforts to reduce their populations led us to discover that at least nine other wildlife species depend on the prairie dog for food or shelter, and the prairie dog colonies improve soil aeration and precipitation capture. Tomorrow we'll talk about how biodiversity contributes to the productivity and stability of an ecosystem. And today we'll talk about how biodiversity affects productivity of an area. Diverse ecosystems are generally more productive, in part because a variety of plant species captures water and nutrients more effectively. The variety in plant species provides a variety of habitats for animals, from microbes to birds to large mammals. Simply put, Biodiversity begets biodiversity. High biodiversity is also thought to increase the ability of an ecosystem to resist being disturbed and to rebound to its original form and function following a disturbance such as wildfire or drought. On a less ecological level, high biodiversity is typically found to be more aesthetically pleasing. Most of us enjoy seeing a landscape covered in a multitude of colors from blossoming wildflowers. Tomorrow we'll talk about biodiversity on a global scale and some of the reasons it is decreasing. The depth of biodiversity across the globe is staggering. About 1.5 million living species have been described and named, and it is estimated that at least 5 million living species have yet to be discovered. At the same time, conservation of global biodiversity is one of the major challenges we face in the 21st century. Biodiversity is declining due to several causes, the primary ones being land use changes, climate change, nitrogen deposition, invasive exotic species, and rising atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. Not only are species disappearing, but the genetic variability in the remaining species is declining, which threatens the stability of ecosystems around the globe. For example, in agricultural systems, a small number of commercial varieties of crop species have been planted across the earth, and many local varieties have been abandoned, along with their genes that enable them to withstand insects, drought, and other stresses. Such activities threaten the stability of ecosystems and economies as well. The famous Irish potato famine of the 1840s resulted from farmers growing only one variety of potato that was susceptible to a particular fungus. Tomorrow I'll provide some examples of ways you can help conserve biodiversity. I'm Jane Mangold. Thanks for listening. Today's Ag Minute will provide some examples of ways biodiversity can be conserved or improved. Because ungrazed rangeland, 
often results in one or two aggressive species becoming dominant, moderate and variable levels of livestock grazing will improve biodiversity. Grazing systems that protect riparian areas are very important because these areas typically support a high number of plant and animal species. For you gardeners, try planting heirloom vegetables and flowers. Heirloom varieties are 50 to 100 years old and predate hybrids that were developed starting in the 1940s. The seeds have been saved from one year to the next and passed across generations, thus maintaining their genetic integrity. Small landowners can increase biodiversity in their backyard by converting an area of the yard to prairie or wildflower meadow, planting a variety of native trees and shrubs that produce berries and fruit, and installing a water source, such as a small pond or ground-level birdbath. I'm Jane Mangold. Thank you for joining me for today's Ag Minute.